All right, guys, so here we are. It's presentation time. What we have here is several students that have done a class project. This is the capstone class, and so these two gents have created this project. I'll let them tell you how it works and what it does. We'll be looking at this uh, laptop and the hardware and what they've made. So you're on, guys. Tell us who you are and what you're doing. All right. My name is Aaron Evans. And I'm Carlos Elise. So what this project is, it's a RFID security access control system. RFID radio frequency identification system. For any of you who have an easy pass or something to that effect for the freeway, so you know if it's a toll road, you don't have to throw any money, just go right through. Or if you have a gym membership, they just swipe a card to get into, or maybe at work. That's all RFID technology. What it uses is radio frequency waves that are sent out by a transmitter and it's looking for these ID cards. Now with this particular technology, it uses UHF frequency band, which is your 300 megs up through 3 gigs. It also uses LF low frequency. It also operates in your VHF frequency range. For this particular one, this is, I believe, a 1.25 kilohertz frequency range. Let's check my documentation real quick so I'm not throwing out bad information. And this one is, next page over. Right, on our data sheets. It's going to be your 1.2K. So what we have here, the way this works, is the technology that we use is the basic stamp two microcontroller chips that are made by Parallax. It's mounted on the Parallax's Board of Education Module Development Board. The RFID module itself that you see, this blue card, that's our reader. They do make readers and writers, so you can read or write to it. With this, we spent with a reader. This is a passive system as opposed to an active, which means your little modules, your tags, they don't have a transmitter or their own power supply. So what happens is, your module is going to send out its RF. When it finds something and sees one of these tags, it's going, this tag is going to take that RF signal that was sent out and modulate a 10-bit data package that's inside this chip onto that signal, which will then be sent into your microcontroller. And depending on if it's a chip, excuse me, a tag that's on the valid list or not, then what will happen is we'll come over here, make the servo move, opening our door. We have a serial LCD display. LCD display is two rows by 16 characters. Each character is 8 by 5 bits, 8 by 5 pixels, excuse me. And what's going to happen on our display is it's going to tell us, yes, it's a valid tag, no, it's a, not a valid tag. We have a red LC, excuse me, red LED. That's going to tell us that we have servo movement, and a bicolor LED. It's going to go from green to red, depending on if the door is opening or closing. We did a sliding door as our project with a servo that's going to be opening it, and closing it. This could be applied to an electron lock system as opposed to something like this. So, our laptop is simulating your security guard's console who's sitting off wherever with a box of donuts and a thermos full of coffee for the night. <laughs> and up here is what the guard is going to be seeing on his display console. So first we'll go through and run our initialization. And there's also a speaker inside here, a little piezo speaker. It's difficult to hear unless you're right up on top of it right now. Essentially it's going to play 
one tone if it's a valid tag, or in a different tone if it's an invalid tag. And if you look at the screen, you can see when it's getting checked and whatnot. Oh, here we go with our initialization. And it's telling us now that the LCD was tested. Servo has been tested, LED has been tested. Donuts and puzzle books are in the desk. Have a pleasant shift. So now we're going to go through and we're going to have each one of our tags scanned. This first one has my name on it, which means it should be on the valid tag list. If you, what we'll do is we'll scan it. It's a valid tag, so our door opens. On our LCD, if you're too far in the back where you can't see, oh, it said, welcome, access granted. Mm -hmm. And after roughly five seconds, it goes, resets itself, goes back to telling you to please swipe a valid card. So now, We'll let Carlos go ahead and scan his tag. Our door opens, our door closes, and our security guard can see that my card was scanned and then Carlos's card was scanned right afterwards. Now, there's no name tag. So is this one on the list? No. Shouldn't be. See what happens. Death ray armed. Death ray armed. <laughs> Possible intruder at the door, death ray, ray armed. He'll never know what hit him. Fire at will. Fire at will. <laughs> Meanwhile, on our LCD over here, it says, invalid tag, please try again. Hmm. Nice thing about this type of system to use as an access control system. It's going to, it will cut a company's overhead. You have one of these at a door. Do you need to have someone sitting there at a desk all night? No. Now you have 20 of these doors. Do you need to have 20 people sitting at a desk? No. No, you have one guy sitting in a room with, with 20 different consoles. Or one console with a split screen. Not only that, if you have someone sitting at a door controlling the access, hey man, you know what? Here's, here's 100 bucks. Can I get in? Oh. Not enough. Here's a thousand. Can I get in now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone have any questions concerning the technology, concerning the project? <laughs>